don't directly notate an equation for the end of capitalism. Or a world where we no longer have rich and poor. But Miliband is heading off to the UN talks in December and he's already expecting to fail. But if we can, if we do succeed in getting the language of just transition into the agreements at Copenhagen, then we can use these to demand changes and these changes will be political and uh, could end up just starting to change the balance of power. <coughs> Well, we have feeble responses from the government ministers who can't even seem to save a wind turbine factory in the middle of a climate change crisis. All we get is greenwash long-term targets that will soon become someone else's problem. The only question around seems to be, how can we power our lives and our lifestyles and cut carbon? They keep saying nuclear and clean coal. But the question that really needs asking is what kind of society do we want to live in? Our current politicians are for the most part cowardly and self-serving electioneers, making promises somebody else is going to have to keep. Their response ability is zero, but what we need is carbon zero. And can we trust them when they say that they do understand the depth of the crisis? Well, I don't think so. From 2000 to 2004, global carbon emissions increased to three times the emissions of the decade of the 90s, despite the Kyoto Protocols in 1997. So, you know, nothing's happening. It's all talk. In, in the Wall Street Journal in March 2007, uh, we read that emissions trading will do nothing to halt global warming. It will be a money-making venture for large corporations. Yet this is the only plan that's got any agreement so far. We have a planet of finite resources, most of us agree with that, but free market capitalism knows no bounds. Cannot be restricted, it cannot be constrained, it exists to grasp and to grow, and all are coerced into a model of aggressively competitive trading. It's the dominant vision, so big and all encompassing, that few can imagine that it's merely one model of humanity organising the business of life on earth. Another way would be a model of cooperative internationalism where information, ideas, skills, technologies can be shared, allowing us to build sustainable communities and supportive links worldwide. Um, Mike Moore, Director, of, uh, Director General of the World Trade Organization, said, um, globalization is with us and it cannot be uninvented. And Blair, bless his little concepts, said, it's irreversible and it's irresistible. Well, we don't agree. Sorry, we've had enough. We cannot continue with the profit-driven economics of our times. We need future-proofed, positive plans where between us all we consume less, we waste little, we share more, and who knows, have time to be the creative, adventurous, thoughtful, social creatures that we can all be. Well, right, we're not perfect. We're still human. But even in a more equal, egalitarian world, we'll still find plenty of problems that we'll have to deal with to manage our business on this earth, I'm sure. But a bit of a warning here is something I've been concerned about recently. We won't persuade simply with opposition and resistance. We need proposition and assistance. We can use the well-known chant, educate, agitate, organise. Um, I'm in Green Left, and we've got a growing network of members in the Green Party. We're working as an outreach group to other socialists and radicals, and we've signed up to an eco-socialist manifesto. We will work to develop an alternative to a society based on alienation, economic, exploitation, corporate rule, ecological destruction and wars. We believe that another world is possible, 
based on ecological and socialist values. But in the Green Party manifesto itself, it states, electoral politics is not the only way to achieve change in society, and we will use a variety of methods to help effect change. <coughs> Changes in values and lifestyles are at the heart of a radical green agenda. I mean, without that bit, I wouldn't have joined at all. But within the Green Party, I think it is important what we are working out and what we are doing within Green Left. So although I am an elected politician, I know that this is only part of my contribution to the work I have to do, and we will all need to use our skills the best way we can, and perhaps learn new ones. Can we persuade people to radically change the way that we measure success? Been the blunt in instrument of the GDP, and instead judge success by the achievement of a stable economy, a sustainable future for all life on this planet, where we share resources and uphold human rights for everyone on Earth. Going back to my point about perhaps persuading others and spreading the story, the tale of a vision of another model that's not free market capitalism. When we're using language to communicate a new story for our future, new plans for society, I am concerned that some of the language that we use on the left may be too blunt and may alienate others who may, with greater effort, be persuaded. And I can't remember where I've nicked this off, but it's either Rudolf Rocker or Chomsky talking about him. But it says, the lessons of history teach us a good deal, but nothing more clearly than the fact that we often remain quite unaware of the forms of oppression of which we are victims, or sometimes agents, until social struggle liberates our consciousness and our understanding. And I just want to say something about agency capture which is an effect that <coughs> any of us can come under in the workplace or in local and central government. Agency capture, the term used to explain how otherwise seemingly free-thinking free and sometimes radical people begin to compromise and then to rationalise their new positions. And as Eric Fromm says in um, an essay on disobedience, the person who has lost the capacity to disobey does not even realise that he obeys. The capacity to doubt, criticise and disobey may be all that stands between a future for mankind and the end of civilisation. Um, I'm just going to uh, call uh, Ian Bruce up to read the greetings from Hugo Blanco. I'm so sorry, I forgot about you earlier on. Just, uh, just while I'm, I'm doing that, I just want to remind people about mobile phones. Um, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got my mobile phone in front of me, and I'm going to turn it off. I encourage you to do that. the same thing. Um, just in case some people have never heard of Hugo Blanco, Hugo Blanco is a long standing leader of the peasant movement in Peru. Uh, a historic figure of the social movements in the left in Peru, former guerrilla fighting against the military regimes in the 60s, elected the Peruvian.